This video will demonstrate the performance of the Wilcoxon matched pairs test. And this test is typically performed when we have um, one group of subjects and we're measuring them uh, twice in a pre-test, post-test fashion. Or we might have uh, two groups of matched individuals um, and we're comparing them based upon exposure to a treatment to see if there are differences. And typically the outcome is going to be uh, at least an ordinal scale. It could be interval or ratio, which is then converted to ranked data. And we have a couple of uh, assumptions. Um, we assume that the uh, total sample size is at least five pairs of measurements. And we're also going to assume that there is an unbiased and accurate uh, data collection on the outcome. And then also, as you mentioned, we're assuming that we have the outcome is measured in at least ordinal scale. So this is uh, very similar to and is a, a substitute, if you will, for the paired or dependent samples t-test. So if we have groups of subjects that don't meet the assumptions for paired samples t-testing, then we can use the Wilcox and match pairs test to be able to test uh, for any significant differences among our two data sets. So as you can see here, we've got data kind of a before and after uh, pre-test, post-test kind of a setup. Uh, and this is data that was measured uh, on a, using a pain scale uh, of 1 to 10, with 10 being maximum pain and 1 being uh, minimal pain. And so this, uh, again, is, is a, a, ra a rating type of a score, but this uh, distribution of these scores is not normally distributed. So we cannot do a paired samples t-test in this case. We're going to do um, the Wilcox and matched pairs instead because we didn't meet those assumptions. So this is a common example of when this might, might take place. So the first thing we want to do is set a null hypothesis. And this is that the after or post-test scores will be equivalent to the pre-test or before scores. So we measured pain level before, subjected them to a treatment, uh, and then measured the pain rating after. Uh, we're going to use our hypothesis testing criteria of P less than 0.05. And so if the uh, Wilcoxon uh, sign rank test value comes up, excuse me, match pairs test value comes up equivalent to a P value of less than 0.05, then we're going to reject the null hypothesis and say there is a significant difference between the pre-test and post-test scores. If the test statistic is equivalent to a p-value greater than 0.05, then we're going to accept that null hypothesis and say there is no significant difference in the pre-test and post-test scores. So in order to do this uh, analysis, we go to the Analyze menu, Non-Parametric Tests, uh, legacy dialogues, and we're going to choose two related samples. So what we need to do is arrange our variables uh, in, into pairs, so before and after in this case. We need to make sure that Wilcoxon is chosen as our test type, and then we click OK to run the analysis. Now the, the logic behind this again is it's looking for differences between pre and post test uh, and if there's a, a change a decrease from pre to post then that would be a negative rank in other words the rank changes from pre to post uh, a positive rank would mean the, the, the rank increased from pre to post and of course we have the number of ties so we tend to have quite a few more negative ranks, in other words, the ranking changed or decreased from, from pre to post. We only have a handful of positive ranks, situations in which the ranking went from lower to higher pre-test to post-test. Okay, so it appears that there is a trend for the rating scores to decrease from the pre-test to the post-test situation. Okay, in order to, to actually determine if that is the case, we can look at the p-value for the z-score, and this p-value is less than 0.05, so we'll be able to reject the null hypothesis and say that the change in ranking or ratings from pre-test to post-test is significantly different. So there was a significant effect of the treatment on the pre-test to post-test scores, and we can say that this change is most likely due to the treatment itself and not due to chance or some other error. 
So to summarize, we can use the Wilcoxon test when we wish to compare um, related groups to one another on an outcome that is ordinal scale or on numeric outcomes that do not meet the assumptions for doing a dependent samples t-test. We can look at the p-value to determine if the difference is statistically significant or if it is unclear in its statistical significance. And then we can make our hypothesis decision based upon that p-value.